composting operation. And I want to start by showing you how we created our bins for our, our composting. Um, we learned about vermicomposting in 2007 at the uh, Common Ground Fair and uh, found out that worms will compost vegetation in half the time that just letting it compost with heat and, and time will. This operation uses red wiggle of worms, and this is a red wiggle of worm. They look like earthworms, but they don't live in the earth. They will only live in compostable materials, and their entire life is eating and making more worms. Around the edges of my container, you can see all their castings, which is a nice way to say what's left over after they've eaten the compostable materials. Um, and that adds a lot to the um, nutritive value of the compost when it's done. It actually has more nutritive value than just composted vegetation. Um, we started this bin out, this is just a plain cheapo storage bin. We, drew, we drilled holes in here and covered them with silicone and screening so that we got a good air transfer in and out of the bin. And we drilled another hole at the bottom, and this is a more elaborate drain than most of my bins have. Um, it really just needs to be a hole so that the moisture that is created with the, the vegetation as it breaks down can get out. What you get when that happens is called worm tea. And you can take that and mix it 50-50 with water and use that to water house plants or um, anything that you have outside. It has a high nutritive value as well. What we use for a carbon soft source, and I'm going to put gloves on now, um, is shredded newspaper. And if you have a shredder at home for documents and that sort of thing, you could use that as well. This shredded paper makes a bedding for the worms so that they can get up out of the compost when they don't want to be in there anymore. Um, it also, they breathe through their skin, so that gives them an area that they can get up and get away from all that wetness. This is my resting bin. I haven't put anything in here in approximately three months. When we were done using this bin, it was filled nearly to the top. And you can see now that the level is here. Um, that's how much this material has broken down. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and dump the bin. One thing that we know about red wiggler worms is they hate light. We've got a lot of light in here right now, so what they're going to continually do as I dump this is they're going to keep burrowing down to the bottom underneath part of the compost, and I'll be able to take the compost off and save the worms. What my lovely assistant can tell you right now is that there is very little smell, right? right. <laughs> this smells like dirt. It does not. It doesn't smell like garbage or anything rotting. This is an old pillowcase, and I have stuffed it with packing peanuts. Um, and I put this at the drain to keep the drain open so that the worm castings cannot get down near the drain. Um, I tried it before with rocks. Uh, that worked equally as well. Obviously added a lot more weight. This doesn't weigh anything at all. And then this is a piece of landscape fabric that I put over the top of this. This is just stuff that I had laying around. I'm going to start by spreading this out to get as much surface area as I can. And as I do, you'll find there's very little here that is recognizable. Um, and again, there is very little to no smell, which amazed me the first time I did this. I was, I was prepared to be totally grossed out. If it does smell, it means that the bacteria is not in a correct balance. And uh, the only time I had that happen to me was when I tried to put too much bread in my compost. And... Um, since I have chickens, I don't put any bread in here now. All these worms that you can see moving through here are going to die for the bottom. They can't stand these, these lights that are here. You will notice that there's quite a few eggshells in here. Um, and I had read that I should crush them before I put them in. 
But what I found is the worms actually use them as little nurseries. We started this process in 2007 after going to the Common Ground Fair and my husband and I both finding the same book called Worms Eat My Garbage. Um, after reading the book, we decided this is something we really wanted to try and went online and learned that in Scarborough, there is um, a small company called Worm Mania. I met up with the owner at the Whole Foods store where he transferred to me a, a small paint bucket that had perhaps this much compost in it. And that cost $20. I've got way more worms than I ever need and I've never had to purchase them again. Another large component of this besides my vegetation is coffee grounds, um, which does bring up the acidity of my compost, but um, I've not found anything that hasn't thrived in this compost. I've used it on annual flowers, perennial flowers, vegetable garden. I have not found anything that has had a problem with that. If I wanted to, I could take um, a section maybe this big of my bin, put that in another bin, and dump the rest of all of this in my garden. The red wiggler worms will not stay in my garden. They're going to continue to go on looking for other compostable materials to eat. But if I save just this little piece, it would be enough to colonize another wor worm bin. What I have here is just compost. It's got a few small worms in it, nothing I'm really worried about. Um, I'm going to take this out now and spread this on the garden, and it's fine just the way it is. I can work it into the top of the soil, or I can just leave it there and let the weather um, continue to, to break things down just a little bit more before I plant in it.